When most people think about Nintendo's long-running Legend of Zelda franchise, they remember the epic adventures, the incredible boss fights, and that sense of discovery. But when the makers of Spirit Sphere play the Minish Cap and A Link to the Past, they see a highly competitive sports game just waiting to become the next big eSport phenomenon. Spirit Sphere is one of those games that probably shouldn't work as well as it does. It's a fairly transparent Legend of Zelda clone that ditches the questing for a fast-paced game of tennis played entirely with swords and magic. You zip around the vaguely familiar locations, picking up power-ups and smacking the floating sphere into your opponent's net. It's a game for people who always loved the idea of Mario's sports series, but wish they were more inspired by Zelda. We're first introduced to our Link alternative, Lin. She fights through ten stages in an effort to show up the competition and earn extra coins. She wields a deadly sword, giving her both a standard and powerful swing. And if she holds down the button, Lin will charge her energy and give it everything she's got. Beyond the typical sword play, our Link wannabe can pick up special items that'll speed her up, make her grow in size, and let her shoot arrows at her opponent. Of course, the person, animal, or monster on the other side of the net can also do the same thing, creating a fun dynamic where you're constantly dodging bombs and other objects. You'll also need to avoid the many stage traps, such as rocks getting in the way or skeletons wandering onto the course. After you've gotten used to Lin, the game will open up with a whole cast of colorful characters. You'll race around the screen on four legs as Buster, a cat-like creature with a nasty hiss. There's Fennel, an armored-up bunny rabbit with a speedy go-kart. Baphomet takes the place of Ganon, using his evil powers to win the match. And don't forget about Ozo, which uses magic instead of weapons. Each of the characters feels a little different, so you'll want to play through the game with everybody to find your favorite. The match can also depend on the type of sphere you're playing with. The game does a good job of mixing things up with spheres that have different effects such as throwing a fireball every time it gets hit, randomly turning invisible, and even splitting into three spheres. This, along with the power-ups and occasional squash matches, goes a long way to keep Spirit Sphere fresh over time. When I played the early access build back in 2016, I was struck by how it felt more like a Zelda spin-off than a proper sports game. And the same is true now. That's not to say the gameplay is bad, but it often feels like the mechanics are better suited for fighting enemies than playing tennis. It never feels like a game designed to be a sports title, but rather an action game modded to be competitive. That said, the controls get the job done and you'll get used to how the game handles after a few matches. With only 10 levels to complete and very few unlockables, solo players will quickly grow bored of Spirit Sphere. You'll enjoy checking out all the characters and throwing gold coins into the fountain, but there isn't much here to bring you back. That said, the game comes to life the moment you add more people. Like a lot of sports games, this was designed with multiplayer in mind, so most of the fun will involve getting your friends together and seeing who's best. Unfortunately, the multiplayer fun is limited to local play, one of the few major gripes I have about this otherwise likable sports game. As silly as it sounds, Zelda and Windjammers is a surprisingly winning combination. Spirit Sphere doesn't have the depth of most sports games, but it's an absurd amount of fun when you play with friends. It has a great sense of style and a lot of good ideas I wouldn't mind seeing in future sports games. What's next? Super Metroid Volleyball? Hey, thanks for watching our review. This is the first of three games we'll be covering this week that were obviously inspired by The Legend of Zelda. We're also going to be reviewing a Zelda 2 clone called Gun Metal Arcadia as well as a game that mimics Link's first adventure called Blossom Tales. We're also going to be taking a look at Bloody Boobs and Hunter's Legacy. Oh, and we're going to announce the name and schedule for our upcoming game show a little bit later today. So I recommend you click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.